This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Alright. Um, you know, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's a really great turnout. Um, thank you to uh, Boston WordPress uh, you know, organizers and Tom for <laughs> inviting us. I'm James Meyer. Uh, this is my colleague Mark. And Tonight we're going to talk about web fonts, some typography basics, and give a demo on iFonts' new WordPress plugin. So Mark and I work at iFonts. Uh, however, you know, it's a big company, so we have to say that the views and opinions expressed in this presentation are our own and not necessarily those of the company. Anyway, Mark's one of our awesome developers, and I focus on technical support for our customers and products. And our mission at MyFonts is really simple. Uh, we want to make it uh, possible for everyone to find and buy fonts on our website at myfonts.com. Uh, we're actually based just up the road in Woburn. And, uh, you know, as you can tell by the number of people in the room, WordPress is pretty popular, even right here in Boston. So we thought we'd uh, ask our neighbors what they think about our plugin. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, you know, I'm interested in WordPress, I'm here at this WordPress meetup, and this guy's up here talking about fonts, so how do these two ideas even relate? So it turns out that fonts have actually been around for a really long time. Uh, you've probably used digital fonts before you knew what WordPress was. Uh, so going back in time, uh, you know, letter presses were spinning off printed documents, and those were created using fonts from metal. And if you fast forward to today's age, uh, where everyone's reading on screens, uh, fonts have taken on a digital form. And so, you know, if you've ever had a school assignment with a teacher who has those very strict requirements, she might have said something like, you know, it has to be time zero when 12 point double space. And uh, so you open up Microsoft Word and you click that drop down and you switch from Calibri to time zero Roman. And at that point, you're actually making some font decisions. So, you know, this history with fonts, though, it shows us that uh, there are popular ways of producing readable content, and that changes in time. And as that changes, fonts have to adopt to keep with the current technology. So, as another example, uh, you know, each morning I wake up, I grab my phone turn off the alarm, probably read a couple of the headlines, check my email, all from the comfort of my bed. And in those five minutes, I probably have already looked at at least 30 fonts. And I don't know, at least for me, I get really excited about fonts, so something, something that small can be really cool. Uh, so today, a really popular reading medium is the web, and on the web, you use web fonts. So web fonts can even be used with WordPress. And that's really exciting because this gives you so many options, right? You're no longer limited to regular, bold, or italic. Um, there are a lot of possibilities. So with those possibilities, those can be very beneficial, especially if you have clients. Because clients, you know, some have very strong visual identities where their content has to be branded and the identity they are known for already, or they might be exploring some options, trying to feel out what they have. And at my fonts, you know, I can confidently say that there are so many options you can satisfy either of these. But you know, why is this branded content important? And a simple reason is that the easiest way to stand out is not to look like your competitors. So when you start using WordPress, there are some default settings that you can use right out of the box. And uh, I was talking with Mark about this earlier. You know, sometimes you'll be surfing the internet, you come across the website and you're like, yeah, this is totally WordPress right out of the box. Like, I don't even have to do the source code. And both you know, the reader can recognize that, and so could your client. So it's 
really hard to take those generic default settings, plug them into the content, plug them into the content, and have it be successful. There has to be this meaningful relationship between the form and content, otherwise it's going to stick out like a sort of thumb. So some ways you can, some things you can control to make impactful changes on this um, would be using elements like your font selection, size, spacing, color, and even some font features. Uh, we're going to give a demo uh, following this on how we're trying to make it easier for people to start making some of those font decisions. But it's kind of like this is the secret recipe and what you choose with your font is kind of like the key ingredient. You know, you can adjust all of these individually, um, but that one is really uh, one of the most impactful of the group here. So when you start adjusting these at various levels, um, you, can, you can start making uh, different levels of importance in the content that you produce. So if you start using the format every single day, the reader will start recognizing like, oh yes, this is a piece of everyday content. And let's say you adjust these elements, right? The size changes, the color changes. The reader will recognize like, hmm, this one's very different. Maybe this is a one-time piece of content that's very important. And so, uh, you know, the readers take notes on this. And as an example, uh, you know, one thing you do maybe when you wake up and shut off that alarm is you check the weather, right? You would like to know if it's going to rain today or, you know, there's actually a hurricane warning. So these can be communicated by just controlling some of these uh, elements of style. So we're going to show an example here where, you know, here's something that might look like WordPress out of the box. And this is funny because this is your local coffee roaster and it's also where you buy your tires. Uh, they look pretty similar. So the first step is that we're going to change the font. If you've ever talked to some designers, some of them have the type really small. Don't trust them. Because type is beautiful, so the next thing we'll do is change the size. Here we can start to see characteristics within the type as it relates to the content. We'll upgrade that some more by start to adjust spacing. We'll start adding in color. And if you want to get nitty gritty, you can apply some font features, like here. This is an example where numbers are used in line with the text. There are various types of numbers. You could have what's called an old style figure, where it has ascenders and descenders that are similar to lowercase shapes instead of standing in a line. And you can also have features like ligatures that make the text a more uniform color so that the dot and the I doesn't clash with the terminal on the F. So we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison, right? You have the option of starting out of the box or start using some typographic control. And just with those subtle changes, right, your coffee roaster now no longer looks like a tire company. Uh, you know, the O in rolling is about to peel on out. There's enough texture on the tires to make it seem like, you know, you can go off-roading. Stump Town is had a little shot of espresso. Uh, so there are some technical benefits of using fonts as well. So with web fonts, these are it, it's it's software, and this is digitally based. The outlines of the type are drawn with SA curves, and these are scalable. So unlike a raster graphic. Right? You could use this at a very small size. You could say, make this really, really big. Um, so that's helpful if you're making a responsive website. And it doesn't require any additional resources. You have a single web font kit, and you don't have to have this large footprint game. So again, you have options. You could choose a font that might have been designed uh, 
1978. So in this example here, right, type is designed, and design solves problems. The problem that this font was designed to solve, related to printing, is it essentially outlived the problem it could solve. You know, you can now use this on the screen, and it's going to look a little funny because, well, those shapes are there to solve a printing problem. Or you could choose something, a font that was made in the very contemporary, where it was designed entirely on screen, and its intended use is primarily on screen. And those designers are also now leveraging the technology of the day, where they can create larger families that contain several weights from a very light to a very heavy, as well as widths, where you can be very narrow, very expanded, and those give you options to solve space problems, like this content now needs to fit in a smaller space, or I need this content to fill a larger uh, filled space. So the web fonts that we provide also uh, you know, come in different file types, like WAF2, WAF, EOG, TTF, and SVG. And these are helpful for current and legacy users. So if your website if the viewers looking at your website on a machine that may be about five years old, uh, they're still going to get that brand new content, and it's going to look just as good as someone maybe using a shiny brand new computer. Uh, so, I'm, you know, I talk to our customers every day, and you know, for beginners, getting web fonts implemented with WordPress can be a little bit unclear, um, especially you know, it's all new territory; they're not familiar with it, and trying to get them to implement web fonts is another hurdle. So we recognize this and we thought it was really easy to do. And Mark here developed a plugin. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark to show you just how easy it is to get up and running with some web fonts. Uh, again, this is new. So if you start using it, um, please send us your feedback on it because we can rapidly adjust it. Okay, is there any questions while I set this up? Um, where is, the, is the plugin on the .org repository, or where, can, where is it? It's stored on our site. It's not on the repository. Okay. Yep. Do you use open source fonts at all? Um, so the fonts that are available on our website, um, you would place an order, and that would essentially be a license to use that font software. Um, there's fonts that are sold, um, are they open source? They're not open source. Um, there are fonts that are free, but there is a relationship with quality and price. So if you're looking for a font that contains, let's say, a very large character set to support several languages, and this font also includes several font features like fractions or small capitals that might be nice in a headline. Um, the cost of that would probably be more than a character set and a free font that's much more limited. Okay, so we're going to go right into the WordPress admin, and we're just going to show you how it starts up. This is a basic um, sample site for WordPress. So this is hosted on my own server, and as you can see, it was using the basic unit testing theme for WordPress, so you can see all of the elements, which I'm going to show you right here. You can just see all the different elements that are available on WordPress. Um, and we're just going to be editing a few of these with uh, our own web fonts. So normally what you would do to get web fonts and my fonts is to go to here and sign in and under your orders it will be a web font kit that you can download and when you download it it will show up as a small zip file and it will be just like this so it will be WordPress that's it you can change the name to whatever you want and that will be the name on your site as well and it shows you how you can do it. You can start here, it can show you all of the different details, how you can install it, how it would look on the website. It's 
So this page at the top shows the web fonts that are included in the kit. So here we have a script font, uh, we have a font that's covered in weight, bold weight, and a text space. And this page, as Mark was saying, has like step-by-step -step instructions. Um, how to use it. Yeah, yeah, how to use it and read it, and strip that too. So we're going to go back here and we're going to upload our plugin. So just add new. Pull the plugin. I'm just going to choose our file. Now, depending upon what you are using for WordPress, it might ask you to do FTP. Um, it might just automatically upload it for you so you don't have to deal with this. But in my case, since this is local, I have to put in my FTP information. So it's unpacking, it's unselling the plugin. And once this is done, we can start messing with it. So now that I hit activate, it will show that the plugin is activated. And now if I go to settings, I can easily edit. So if you happen to already have this set up, it would save all the details you did before. Um, so if you wanted to set this to the script web font, you could. And it'll set your site title, your description, your post body, post title. But you can also edit it on a theme as well. And I'll show you that in a second. But let's just first save this. So we make sure that it's there. And now that if I go to this site, see how everything has changed. The new font on the title, post, and body. <laughs> and again, this is just like the first step in that recipe. Yeah. So from here, you can then adjust you know, color, spacing, mm -hmm. etc. Yes, yeah, so you don't even need to use these selectors. If you are a more advanced user and you just want to make your own theme or you want to add it to your own theme, you can just say none to all of them. Save the changes. Go back. So now I have it just like this. We're just going to add, this is just to show an example, that you can just add it. So we're going to take FFT sit web. And now I believe that this is just gonna make sure. Yep. So now the title of the WordPress page is now an FFT so without you having to use these selectors on the plugin page. And so you know, we thought that this plugin would make it a lot easier to just kind of enable people to jump right in and start using web fonts. Yep. And, uh, yeah. and if you ever wanted to say, th there's a case where you would want to switch sometimes to different themes, right? Because I have to have as many themes as possible. Um, so let's set this back here. So now we're going to have this show up again as the old font. Now let's switch to a different theme. Let's switch to 2015, and now that we switched to 2015, we'll go back here and we'll see that the title has changed. So it's keeping the style data for your web fonts across different themes. It doesn't save it specifically to the theme. You don't have to modify your theme to add the web fonts. Uh, question back there? Uh, yes, we're still implementing more features to this plugin. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Is there any questions? Sure. Um, oh, oh, I'm in the front first. I'm gonna get to the back. Uh, so when you when you pick a font, uh, what kind of goes under the font under the hood to make the font show up there? Is it outputting a style sheet? Is it doing something like that? It's outputting a style sheet to do all of the changes. 
How do you get it to apply to a variety of themes and not just uh, certain themes? So what it's doing is, when it's adding the theme, it's adding it in line. So it's not putting it on the theme itself. Um, this is why if you're using themes like if you just want to get the max performance, it would be better to add the web fonts directly to the theme. But if you're just a user that just wants to get started, this is a good way to start, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. 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 So if you log in, if you create an account, I'm just going to log into my own account. So, uh, on our website, uh, accounts are free. Um, yeah, you can start your own account. Um, well, I guess I'll just sign up and show the whole set. So, you just make a new account. So this is the the basic startup page. This is what would happen if you just signed in. Um, we're just going to pick out a free font. And just show the process. Yep. So while this is loading. <coughs> Scroll down here, add to cart. So now I have Miso regular. This is uh, the desktop font. Oh, I'm sorry. We use web fonts. Yeah, that's They're right. <laughs> that's right, sorry. Let's try this one instead. Another font that's free. Um, it's really weird. Oh, okay, here we go. Sorry. Alright, so. So now I add it to the cart. And now we just check out. Place order. And now I have a free web font kit. And you can type in whatever you want here, like I said before. So mark a font kit. And when you scroll down here, you'll see an option called WordPress. And you just select this option. And it will let you download kit as a uh, WordPress kit. And there it is. And I could just install it too, um, doing the same thing we did before. So add new. It doesn't matter if this one is still here. We can use multiple kits at the same time if you want. So each kit is a font. Yes. You can have more than one font in a kit. Correct. Yep. Yeah. The older kit had four. So this same same deal. same time and just go right here. Oh, it's the other one, sorry. And you said me say yeah. So let's make sure that this one isn't going to be here. So just saving this. Going back. And we're 
we're just going to select Museo 500 as the site title. Save changes. And now we'll see that this changed to Museo. So the plugins are part of the web font it downloads, meaning you would have to place an order for the web fonts on site uh, to gain access to the plugin download. Did To your theme yourself, so you can add it into this. Mm -hmm. So, based on what theme you have, it will have different element tags. So, this one assumes the normal WordPress plugins, uh, not plugins, uh, sorry, the normal elements for WordPress, so entry title, site title, the common ones. But it can. Yes, but in most cases it will. So, are those two themes fighting it out, or which one takes precedence? Um, is whichever theme. Oh. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's based on which one was the last. So, this one will take precedence over the other one. Sorry. If I download ten fonts, I'm gonna have ten plugins. That sounds crazy. You can bundle all the fonts together. Yeah. If I buy them on the same day. Um, you can download a new kit at any time with a combination of web fonts from previous orders. So let's say you place an order for one font, you place an order for a separate font. Uh, on our website, uh, you can configure your kit to include the web fonts from those two separate orders as one separate kit, meaning one plugin. Under what fonts? So, yes. Yeah. So, um, the web fonts license is on our website. Um, it's pretty simple. To, to there's two models. There's one called Pay Once, which is your license is for a number of page views per month, and as long as you're under that, you're within your license. Uh, there's another one on the website called Pay As You Go, where you're prepaying for a number of page views that can be used over any period of time. And if you need to add more later, uh, it would just be another order for those. Yes? So if you buy a font, is it possible to say you're doing a for branding? Yep. You buy a font for both print and web? Do you have a way of doing that? No. What's your price range? Yep. Sure. Uh, so there's a way of doing that. Uh, typically, uh, so with a font manufacturer, it's called the Foundry. Uh, and the majority of the Foundries on our website will offer a combination deal. So when you license their desktop and web fonts in the same order, they'll get a combination discount. Uh, the prices, uh, they range from free, like we saw here in the demo. Um, and I'm not sure how high they go, but generally speaking, you know, the more product you're purchasing, the cost will increase. But foundries will also offer uh, discounts based on volume. So the more products you purchase that are made by them, uh, as well as quantity. So when the quantity increase, usually the cost works out. So let's say it's for desktop, which is based on number of users, and you order a license for several users, the cost per single user works out to be less. And that similarly applies for the page views, where if you license a higher number of page views, the cost per single page view would typically cost less. There is also a discount specifically for web fonts based off of a period. So um, there is quite a lot here. You can see all these end today, but there's some the bottom that lasts for a while and 
that adds on to the multi-user discounts as well. Mm -hmm. So when a lot of these foundries are releasing new products, um, you know, they're really excited about them, they want a lot of people to start using their fonts, so they'll add kind of often uh, what's called like an introductory discount, and uh, it'll appear here on my specials page, and you know, these are really great. Like you can get an entire font family that has several of those weights, widths, and styles, um, so you basically your web fonts on page views, right? Yes, that's correct. Right. What happens when you hit the max page views that you paid for? Sure. Um, so the web fonts are going to continue to play. Your, your website's not going to be affected by that. Um, in your account, uh, we have what's called the web font usage meter. And that'll show you an indicator of like the amount licensed, the amount used, and from there, you can license more if you need to. And uh, when you start running low, we'll email you a notification saying, like, hey, you're about 70% used or 90% used. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if you're 100% used and you haven't paid you? Uh, your web fonts will continue displaying and we'll email you or monitor. <laughs> 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 okay. yep. sure there was another question in the back. How are we different than Fonts.com? That's a great question. So Fonts.com offers a hosted solution where they would provide you with a snippet of code to insert and they serve up your web fonts. So the web font kit that you're downloading from our site would be self-hosted. Right? And that's beneficial, especially like if you're running a really large little website and you want to have control of those assets. So that's a question today. So, you know, the feedback that we hear on this is very essential to that. Um, we're also using this at the same time, doing some stress testing in-house. So, what do we have in mind for V2? I think right now, like, this is V1 today, so that's exciting. We're excited about that. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure what's on the map for V2 at the moment, but with your feedback, uh, we can help navigate there. That's a question over here. Yeah. Okay. What's the best way to provide feedback after you? Um, sorry. Help no, that uh, as well. Oh, feedback. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so help at myfonts.com. And uh, I monitor the inbox uh, along with two other colleagues. So you just want to get in touch with human and hear back from us really quick. That's all we have. So yeah. thank you everyone.